What's up, Pandas? Peter Von Panda here. You know what's nice about spending my own money on watches when I'm interested in them? Is I get to come tell you when uh, they're not as great as I had hoped. And I picked up this Simplify. It's a 4805. And I'm going to tell you that we're going to tear this one a new ad. Simplify. Um, I picked up this watch because it looked awesome. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I kind of was... Uh, simply sold on its good looks. It was a watch that I kind of wanted to check out for a while uh, because in, from a design standpoint, it looks almost exactly to me, maybe too much so, um, of the Issey Miyake Soleil line, S-A-I-L-A-Y. Um, you know, a watch that I really liked. It was actually a watch that I bought and reviewed here. You can definitely check it out, but I actually sold it uh, because I didn't think the construction uh, quality was high enough for me. You know, it was good enough. It had kind of a mineral crystal. It looked good. The you know the the manufacturing was good. There weren't any gaps or kind of manufacturing issues. It just it had it was really light. I really loved the design. Um, I didn't love the movement, uh, but you know just all kind of everything about it felt a little cheaply made. Not that's not probably the right word. Just kind of thin and delicate, and it's not really what I wanted in a watch. I kind of want them to feel robust. Um, thick, heavy, durable, etc. Uh, and then I saw this watch, the Simplify, and it has almost the exact design. Check it out. Look at the pictures. If you think that, uh, if if you think the uh, the Simplify watch does not look like that, I'd say you're crazy. You're crazy. So first of all, I've been reluctant to pick these up because, or let me say that that uh, Issey Miyake watch at four hundred and fifty dollars. It just didn't represent a good enough value proposition for me. All right, so I saw the Simplify watch. I thought, wow, it looks great. It looks a lot like that Issey Miyake. Um, and in fact, you know, it may actually improve on some of the things that I didn't really like it. So, you know, the Issey Miyake was only like a 44 millimeter watch, but it was pretty thick. So it had kind of more of a vertical thick look to it. This one was is, is considerably thinner, so I think it kind of looks proportionally a little little better. Um, it's a polished case design, which was different, and, uh, you know, I wanted to pick one up, but they were just too expensive. You know, uh, the price on these, and I'll say list price, but the selling price was often like $650 in places I looked, and that was just too much to kind of take a stab on you know, an unknown brand that I hadn't really seen any other reviews on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I finally found one cheaper and picked it up and kind of took a first look at it a few moments ago to before I started shooting this video and wanted to share some of my thoughts. So first of all, it appears to have a genuine leather band. It is kind of a nice uh, camel-like khaki color. And, you know, there's no stitching. It's a little bit tapered. Uh, it feels pretty good. It's certainly... It, it's not thick it's but it's not super thin um but it's not padded it's just it's, but it's 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 soft and it's pliable and it should pretty feel pretty good um you know the buckle on it which also says simplify is a pretty standard parts bin buckle there's nothing other than the simplify being like laser etched in there or sandblasted in there you know there's nothing that Screams to me that this is going to fall apart, but it's certainly not like the thickest or most unique buckle. A couple of retention straps here, you know, and kind of a, uh, like a, I don't know, you know, like a traditional leather finish on it. Uh, the lugs are what's the most interesting, and I really do kind of like these lugs. I think, you know, the Longines uh, Avigation watches kind of had it. Obviously, the Issey Miyake had a very similar kind of lug design, the Glycine. Uh, F104 limited edition has this kind of a similar link lug system, but this obviously makes it very, very similar to the Issey Miyake, but I can tell you that in execution, it's a little bit different. So they're fixed. Where the Issey Miyake had a little bit of a hinge to them. You can see that it's a spring bar uh, a connection uh, to hold the band on, but this whole piece here is all fixed. It's all kind of molded in. Now, here's where on inspection, my first issues are going to be, you know, you do have a brushed finish on the top here, and this seems to be polished, so I do like that color, come, uh, that contrast there. But you can see all sorts of finishing issues on the case, right? I'm, I'm kind of using the reflected light there to, to show you. Now, that makes some sense to me because it's going to be really hard to get in there, but then either you need to cast or, you know, uh, figure out your manufacturing process. It even looks like 
you know, a grinding wheel was kind of used right there. And that's not the only place. I mean, there's just, you know, ripples and kind of machining and tooling marks or whatever all the way around. Now, if you, if you get over here to the side, it gets a little better, right, where you can put a polishing wheel up to it or something like that and kind of smooth things out. But there's still a little waviness on it, you know, where it's just, you know, not that high quality of a case, right? Um, I'm not going to bash this thing all night long because I'm going to eventually stop the video. <laughs> just kidding. I am. Um, so, you know, the, the case is okay, but this is where I wish there was a little more standardization between the prices and even the retail prices of what watches advertise themselves for. Because first of all, so this is as far as we are into the watch and there's no way, there's no way in hell this is a $650 watch, right? Um, once we get to the end, I'll give you where I think the price point on this should be. But so far, I am kind of seeing a what would kind of fall in my reviews of cheap watches would be, right? I don't think it's ugly, and I don't think it's a, the worst construction ever made, but there's just a lot of things in here that are, you know, obviously irking me right off the bat. Now, pretty thin case, um, you know, it's kind of beveled edge. There's nothing really fancy about the design in, in any regard. It, it actually seems kind of thin. The watch itself is very light. Uh, you know, so you can tell that it doesn't have like kind of the same heft as like a diver's watch, which I'm not expecting it to. But even the dial here, you know, it looks like you've got some applied markers. It looks like this inner chapter ring, which is silver, uh, and the markers are silver or look like they're applied. But that inner chapter ring, if we can go take a look, um, upon a closer inspection, looks like it might just be pressed in the dial. So it just might be part of the dial, which would make sense to me because lining up uh, large pieces like that on dials is really, really hard to do. I know Louis Moynet does it on some of theirs, and it's just a super, super tough thing to do. And so when I saw that, I thought, okay, you know, there's going to be a lot of three-dimensional, but as you can see, it's really flat, this this ring right there. And so I think it's just part of the dial, which is going to be a much easier way to manufacture it, right? Uh, the, 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 the hour markers here, I think, are applied. Those certainly look like legitimately applied to the dial there. Uh, the dial does have a kind of a nice pearlescence to it a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm actually relatively pleased with that. You know, it's not just like a, a matte white. Um, the minute markers are kind of a bright white. You can see those on the, the outer ring there. And the Simplify logo uh, up there. The 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 sky blue or the baby blue second hand is actually very similar to the Issey Miyake too in this color combo where it was like the 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 white and tan color combination some thin hands right there our uh, and minute hands I, it looks like they're color filled on white but I don't know if that means they're luminescent or not we will take a look at that now all of these sub dials are actually working I kind of scrolled through to to check them out what you have here is a date wheel. So <laughs> it does make it a little hard to use. You can see the 31 up there, 30, 29, uh, 28, 27. So basically it's saying it's on the 27, you know, but you might have to kind of do a little bit of counting if, you know, you're look using it at a glance. You can see there's a little bit of, you know, um, a depth difference on the sub dials are kind of just smashed into the dial a little bit they're kind of pressed in they're just there's just the ever so slight and subtle kind of uh, depth difference I don't think there's any material difference if you kind of scroll if you or if I kind of rotate the, the dial around you can see it's just kind of a matter of um, you know the depth of pressed in the dial is the only thing that kind of gives it you know uh, uh, separation from the rest of the dial um, this one is the 24-hour window, so you can see here that, you know, this is showing me it's uh, almost 2 o'clock, but this is going to show you, the, you know, that it's 2 a.m., <laughs> if it were, uh, as a, so you'll get the a.m. p.m. here, and then this window is obviously your day, and th all these work. All these absolutely work. Now, I could not figure out a position here if I were to kind of um, pull the crown out here to adjust any of those separately. So what you would have to do is really roll through um, every day, uh, as far as I could tell, the, uh, maybe we can. Look, so if I, um, looks like there is a first position. 
I scroll through it like this, counterclockwise, I can adjust the date. Let's see if I go clockwise, if that doesn't mean any different, does anything here on the first position. So we do have a little bit of a date adjustment. Okay, so if I go to the second position, I can adjust the time. It does not appear to be a third. Um, and you're going to need some sort of, and that's where I was, I guess I was confused, you need to be able to do the date and the day somehow differently because obviously they're not always going to coincide. So I guess this is how you're going to do it. You're going to want to roll through, get the right time and the right day, and then come back and do this first position and adjust your date. So just kind of keep that in mind. Not a screw down crown. Um, I'm assuming there's some sort of water resistance. Uh, three atmosphere, so it's just splash resistant. You can see steel case back here, uh, Japanese quartz movement, and you can see it's just like a pressed on case, so you would just use a blade to kind of pry that off. Now, all right, here's the here's my issues. Um, I don't think it's a bad looking watch, I think it's unique. I certainly love that Isi Miyake. Um, I actually parted with $450 to get it. And then, you know, just like I said, at $450, I was just a little bit disappointed. It just didn't live up to kind of my expectations of what, uh, you know, the watch should look like and feel like at that price point. And so I sold it. Um, I will tell you that watch is light years ahead of this watch in terms of how it feels and, and to, to be honest, how it looks. And this watch, uh, at least has ambitions of being a $650 watch. Now, I don't know, I think you can find these a lot cheaper, but to me this watch, the appropriate price point for this Simplify watch should be, let's call it 50 to $75. It should be a sub $100 watch. Based on the movement and kind of how I think of the construction, which this crystal, you know, if it's mineral, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to say like that, I'll be honest that if that is, I'm, I'm being generous because I think it's just plastic, you know, it doesn't have any weight. It certainly doesn't sound or, or feel as I'm tapping on it. Like it's a, it's a, um, a really robust crystal at all. Maybe just plastic or maybe just glass, but I think this should be a sub $100. And at that price point, it's, it's a style watch, it's a fashion watch, um, and hopefully it'll last a while, right? Because my issue with it is, is if you're going to spend anywhere from $100 to $150, there are lots of brands that give you great value. So like the Noble timepieces that I showed you um, and that we're going to show you in the future. You know, those watches are $100 $150. Fantastic watches. You can get um, some of the Spinnakers that are certainly, they, all of them have been certainly robust. You know, if these two got in a fight, boom, this thing is going to lose. This crystal on this one is a sapphire coated mineral crystal. And this sounds and feels a whole lot different. You know, I prefer just a sapphire crystal, but this feels light years better than this, okay? And so, you know, you can get some spinnakers for, you know, under 200 bucks, right? Uh, you know, or in the 100-ish, uh, 100 plus dollar range. And I think that's going to be light years better. And, and obviously a bunch of other uh, brands and watches that I've shown you that I've gushed over that have not been super expensive. You know, now um, in the $650 range, that's going to put a lot of things on the table, a lot of competitors that are just going to blow this out of the water. So please do not go out and spend anywhere near the retail number. It's kind of like Invicta or something like that, where they're just throwing numbers out there. It has absolutely no nothing to do with the true value of this watch. Um, if you do find a good deal on it and it's cheap, you know, yeah, pick it up. I, I think at a glance, it looks pretty good. Um, I will even, you know, I, I know I didn't give you the wrist shot here because this is the only time this watch is going to be on this wrist. I'll be honest because uh, I don't, I, I wouldn't wear it. Um, so, like I said, you're just getting the honesty from the panda here, man. Uh, this is just uh, my honest opinion and I know some people like it and I don't know if Simplify will ever see this and reach out. And, you know, and I might give another shot on something, but... Uh, you know, I don't think it's a bad looking watch. And if the construction were just a little bit higher quality, you know, I would wear this. I, I think looking at it, I say, 
I like it. I like the style. I like the, the modernness. It has some kind of like, you know, vintage style, you know, pieces, especially with the, the lug design here. And it's classy. But it's just, you know, it ends up being kind of in that beater vein because of the, the price and the, and the quality of it. So that's, that's, my only, that's my only beef with it. That's my only beef. But if you can pick it up for under 100 bucks, I think you're, you're, then I don't have my issues on it. Cool? There it is. It's the Simplify. This one's the 4805. Peter Von Panda. Out.